Hello everyone! Today, I will be demonstrating to you how to perform Fundal Height Measurement and Lupus Maneuver. For the purposes, Fundal Height Measurement is done to determine fetal growth and to identify multiple pregnancies and complications of pregnancy. Lupul's maneuver is done to determine fetal presentation and position. For the preparation, first, you should explain the procedure to reduce anxiety and enhance cooperation from the client. You have to encourage the woman to void to empty her bladder if she has not done so in the last 30 minutes. Provide privacy by closing the door and curtain to promote clients' comfort and enhance cooperation. Wash your hands using warm water if possible. If there is no warm water, warm it by rubbing both hands together. Hand washing is very important to prevent the spread of possible infection. For lupus maneuver, using warm water aids in patient comfort and prevents tightening of abdominal muscles during palpation. You can wear gloves, especially if you see that the client has lesions or there is a chance of blood or any body fluid contamination. Then prepare your tape measure. Position the woman supine with her knees slightly flexed. The rationale for this is that for fundal height measurement, a supine position has been found to yield least variation in measurements and for lupus maneuver, the flexing of the knees slightly relaxes the abdominal muscles. Place a small pillow or roll towel under her left side. Enlarged uterus can compress the inferior vena cava and the lower aorta leading to maternal supine hypotension and reduced uteroplacental blood flow which can cause fetal compromise. Therefore, using a pillow or towel tilts the uterus off the vena cava, preventing supine hypotension syndrome. Now, you're ready to perform fundal height measurement. Expose the abdomen and then place the zero mark of the tape measure in centimeters at the uppermost border of the symphysis pubis. This is done because usually the top of the fetal head or buttocks is at the uppermost border of the symphysis pubis. Then after that, run the tape measure along the midline of the woman's abdomen to the most border of the uterine fundus. To locate the fundus, the hand is moved down the abdomen below the siphon sternum until the curved upper border of the fundus is felt. This is done to measure the fetal growth. Then after that, document the distance in centimeters and compared with calculated gestation. Typically, tape measurement in centimeters is equal to the week of gestation between the 20th and 31st weeks of pregnancy. Fundal height, much greater than the standard, suggests multiple pregnancy, miscalculated due date, large for gestational age infant, polyhydramnios, or gestational trophoblastic disease. Fundal measurement, much less than the standard, suggests that the fetus is failing to thrive, a pregnancy length was miscalculated, or an anomaly interfering with growth has developed. Now, let's perform Lupul's maneuver. So, for the first step, you need to observe the woman's abdomen as to which is the longest diameter and where fetal movement is apparent. The longest diameter or axis 
Oasis is the land of the Venus, while the location of activity most likely reflects the position of the feet. The first maneuver is what we call Fundal Grip. It is done to determine if fetal head or bridge is in the fundus. Stand at the foot of the client, facing her, and then place both hands flat on her abdomen. Palpate the superior fundus. Or you can do like this. Determine consistency, shape, and mobility. So proper positioning of hands ensures accurate finding. Head feels more firm than a bridge. It is round and hard. Moves independently of the body, but the buttocks is soft, less well-defined, and moves in conjunction with the body. Now, let's perform the second maneuver, also known as umbilical grip. It is done to locate the back of the fetus. So face the client, then place palms of each hand on either side of the abdomen. Next, palpate sides of the abdomen. To palpate for the right side, left hand should be stationary and push a little to the right. Then, right hand will palpate the right side from top to bottom. To palpate for the left side, the right hand should be stationary and push a little to the left. Then, the left hand will palpate the left side from top to bottom. If it's the fetal back, it will feel smooth, hard, and with resistant surface. If it is the fetal knees and elbows, you can feel angular bumps or nodules. Now, it's time to perform the third maneuver or what we also called as Pollux Grip. This is done to determine the part of fetus at the inlet and its mobility. Gently grasp the lower position of abdomen just above the symphysis pubis. Then, Try to press the thumb and index finger together. After that, determine the movement and if it is firm or soft. It is not engaged if the examiner's hands can be pressed together and part moves upward. It is engaged or firmly settled into the pelvis when the examiner's hands cannot be pressed together and the part there does not move upward. It is the head if it is firm, round, and hard, but it is the bridge or buttocks if it is soft. Now, it's time to perform for the fourth and last maneuver, also known as pelvic grip. This is done to determine the fetal attitude and degree of fetal extension into the pelvis. And it should only be done if the fetus is in cephalic presentation. Place fingers on both sides of the uterus or abdomen approximately 2 inches above the inguinal ligaments. Then, press downward and inward 
into the direction of the birth canal. Allow your fingers to be carried downward. It is the back of the fetal neck if your fingers did not meet any obstruction. It is the fetal brow if your hand meets an obstruction and this obstruction should be at the same side of where you located the fetal elbows and knees a while ago. The fetus has poor attitude if the examining fingers meet an obstruction with the same side as the fetal back, meaning your fingers touched a hyperextended head. If the brow can be easily palpated as if it is just under the skin, the fetus is in posterior position. And finally, document your findings. Thank you everyone for listening and God bless you all. Bye!